But we use the phrase intervention strategies rather than school reform in the title of this symposium because we're not talking here about overall national approaches to improving America's STEM performance. We are talking about strategies for increasing uh, performance in under-resourced schools and among underrepresented minorities. Stakeholders in this instance go beyond educational institutions and school systems to include community groups, corporations, civic leaders, professional organizations, indeed all dimensions of our civic infrastructure. This is not to say that these entities are not involved in the larger picture as well. The difference I want to highlight here is that in the case of intervention strategies, they are directly involved in the delivery system. Clear? Okay. I also do not want to imply that service to under-resourced schools and underrepresented minorities should be abandoned to the civil infrastructure. However, our experience over decades is that the educational equity issue is a stubbornly intractable one. And while we continue to wrestle with that issue, we cannot just sit back and allow the next generation of young people to miss the train to technological competence, consigning them forever to the social and economic backwaters of our society. In fact, it is possible that making sure that they make this train could go a long way towards solving the educational equity problem as well. My mention of the next generation makes it clear, if it was not already, that our focus is on K through 12, on the K through 12 segment of the educational pipeline. Participants in the inaugural meeting of the Benjamin Banneker Institute for Science and Technology told us that their biggest problem in drawing, drawing um, students into STEM studies and keeping them there was poor preparedness. And when asked how the Banneker Institute could contribute to the progress in this area, they told us to focus on K-12, so we did. I'm hearing that the news is pretty good at the graduate level. According to a recent AAAS report, the number of doctoral degrees awarded to African Americans, Alaskan Natives, Native Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Native Pacific Islanders from 2001 to 2008 grew by 34% in scientific and technical fields. Within the subset of the natural sciences and engineering, that increase was closer to 50%. That's fabulous news and kudos to the 66 member alliances for graduate education and the professorate that created this success. The gentleman who runs that program is here with us today, Dr. Roosevelt Johnson. Kudos to you, sir. I know. And he argues with the numbers, is it 60%, is it 50%, it depends on your cut it, but you know, whatever it is, it's an excellent result. This conversation is about how to create that kind of success at the K through 12 level. We have assembled for you here today four initiatives that have had good success at creating STEM stars in unexpected regions of the firmament. They represent a range of approaches by the American civil infrastructure, community-based organizations, corporate initiatives, university school partnerships, after-school programs. Is Devin here yet? I'm about to give him a kudo. I am a skipping him. Um, after-school programs. We even have an actual school reform model. Each speaker will have half an hour to describe their model, including Q&A for each. That should take us to 5.30 or so, when we will take a break to allow staff to set up our meal. We reconvene at 6 o'clock for dinner and further discussion, led by former NEA President Reginald Weaver. This will be your opportunity to share your favorite strategies with your colleagues gathered here, why you think the featured models succeeded, circumstances under which you believe they would fail what it would take to take these and other initiatives to scale, what national policy innovations are needed, and other matters you believe to be important for moving the needle on this issue. 
This issue is, by the way, increasing participation among minorities in STEM fields. Okay, you care about that? There is one very important program that is not represented here today because of the unfortunate overlap between the scheduling of this symposium and their national convention. No best practices discussion of this kind would be complete without mention of that. So I will attempt to give you an overview of their program design for inclusion in our thinking here today. I'm talking about the National Society of Black Engineers, or NSBE. Most science membership organizations class themselves as professional organizations. NSBE classes itself as a student organization. And this distinction is a very important one as it relates to driving the organization's focus on increasing the number of African Americans involved in STEM. NSBE is an after-school program whose chapters operate, are operated by schools, community-based organizations, churches, wherever the leadership exists to form the group and keep it going. In fact, I was going to say, the leader of the largest NSBE chapter in the country, Patriot Technology Center, is due here today. He's not here yet. His name is Thurman Evans. Jones. And he has, I don't know, how many kids? Thurman Jones, I'm sorry, I was doing that. How many kids does he have? Uh, over 400. Right, okay. Um, Nesby's growth over the past several years under the excellent leadership of their executive director, Carl Mack, has been astronomical. And they are on track for tripling that growth by 2010. When Carl took over, there were about 11,000 people in the organization. There are now over 30,000 people, and they're on track for 100,000 by 2010. Um, Nesby has a pipeline organization structure that mirrors the educational pipeline. SEEK, Nesby Junior, Nesby Collegiate, and Nesby Alums. SEEK is a relatively new summer program that draws kids who probably can't even spell engineering let alone have any idea what engineers actually do. Now, I've visited SEEK sites, and these kids are just kids off the street who otherwise would be running around doing who knows what during the summer. And they sit in classrooms, and they learn math, and they learn engineering, and they build stuff. They're absolutely wonderful. And they're very, ex and, and what's interesting about that program is it's run by NSBE Collegiate. So you have the, you have the college students running the summer program. Now, in between, you have Nesby Junior, which operates at the middle and uh, senior high school level. And if that isn't a pipeline pull strategy for pulling people into the study of engineering, I don't know what is. It's a very, very effective strategy. I have been promoting the idea of collaboration among black science membership organizations with Nesby at the K-12 level to expand Nesby's program, rather than have the biologists and the chemists and physicists and those people building, repeating the infrastructure that NSBE has already created. Because at the K through 12 level, not maybe as higher you get into the high schools, the uh, more it matters. But differentiation among the sciences at the SEEK level, and possibly the NSBE junior level, doesn't really matter. So you can have chem chemical biology or chemical physics or whatever, you know what I'm saying? The de that the delivery system is there, the mechanism to channel um, assistance from the graduate level into the grad schools is fabulous. There's no reason why we need to repeat that. Um, now, Nesby has said that they like that idea. I haven't sold it to anybody else yet. We'll see how far we get. Um, okay, and the Nesby commercial. Um, let's move on to our featured programs. First, we have Project Lead the Way, presented by Cricket Thomas Odell, Project Lead the Way's Director of Marketing and Special Projects. Lead the Way is our school reform model. They demonstrate the effectiveness of two different approaches, actually, the school within a school and the integrated curriculum. Cricket? Thank you. And um, just to continue the Nesby commercial, I just returned, not just, um, maybe it was last week, I've been traveling a lot from the Nesby National Convention, which is held in Las Vegas. And I had the pleasure of sitting with Brother E.D., Carl Mack, uh, at the union. <laughs> And I tell you, to be around those young people, those college students, and also have what they call the PCI, the pre-collegiate initiative, which the, the high school students come in there. And they were just awesome. It just rejuvenated me to be more inspired, more in passion, more in love with what I do every day, which is, as I said, I work for Project Lead the Way. 
And NSBE is an opportunity for us to collaborate because I, 